Hi, I'm Trish and welcome to the Sew Along for the Piper Sweater. So the first thing we need to know is that this is a knit garment. I'm going to be sewing this with my overlocker and also with a plain stitch on my sewing machine. You don't need an overlocker or a serger to sew this garment together. You can just use a zigzag or a lightning bolt stitch on a regular sewing machine. If you want more information about that, I do have a blog article on my website, but let's just jump straight in. So because this is a knit garment, I have patterned it with six mil quarter inch seams. So most of our seam allowances are going to be six mil quarter inch. I'll talk you through that as we go through. So when you're ready, set your serger up with four threads of color that match your fabric. Don't forget to make sure you have nice sharp needles here. And also, when we switch to our sewing machine, make sure you have stretch or ball needles in your uh, machine and loosen, um, sorry, lengthen your stitch length from normal. And when we go to do the hems, you might like to use a twin needle in your plain sewing machine, in your domestic sewing machine, or you could use a cover stitch machine if you prefer. So whatever you decide to do, let's just jump straight into it. This pattern is a really versatile pattern. You can have a short cuff, a long cuff, you can have the very popular um, bell puff sleeves, um, some people used to call them bishop sleeves, and then you've got the option of the roll collar. Now where I come from, we call that a polo, but it's certainly not a polo neck, it's a polo collar. I know not everyone does, so I'll call that a roll collar. And also we have the funnel neck as well. Um, so there's two lengths involved in this. We'll just work through this all as we go. Um, there's also the written instructions if you prefer or you need to refer to something else. So let's just jump straight in and get started. I'm going to start with view A. Now view A is very cool in that it can be a fully reversible garment. Um, that's quite cool because you can use one colour at the front, a different colour at the back and maybe different colours for each sleeve so you can keep changing your look up if you want. So as you see here the neckline is built up. We're using a knit which is not going to fray so there's no real need to um, surge or overlock through this edge but I'm going to anyway um, just for peace of mind and just because it looks a bit nicer. Now the fabrics, um, the other thing is when I do surge, when I overlock, I'm going to be overlocking on the raw edge and I'm not going to be cutting anything off. So this um, today I'm sewing in is a cotton lycra. Um, I don't normally do sweaters in that weight, it's just I have found out a lot of my customers do and they do have extra stretch in them so I just want to make sure this will work for the extra stretch. Um, what else do I need to tell you? View A is more forgiving in fabric types, you can get away with softer fabrics for View A. It's a tunic, you can get anything from a sweater knit right through to um, a polar fleece or a poodle fur if you wanted. Um, view B you do need more structure just to hold that lovely puff out at the bottom of the, um, the long cuff to get that lovely shape. I mean you could do it in something with more drape but really to get the most out of that look you do need a firmer fabric like a ponte or a double knit. So um, let's overlock across the top um, for both the front and we're going to be repeating this for the back. The next step for view A is to come to the hemline and if we look at the hemline here on the side seam you'll see that it comes up and there's a dog leg in. We need to now secure the edge just the same as we did the neck. We're going up the side here around the curve and you need to go up about 10 centimeters or 4 inches past the curve up here. Um, a you don't need to measure it exactly, it doesn't have to be perfect, but we do need to bring the surging up away. And we're going to do that for the four sides, so the two of the front and then the two of the back.
your front and your back and place them right sides together and match the neck area. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fold both of these towards the front on that notch point. So fold them. It doesn't really matter whether you fold them to the front or to the back. Just fold them over and then we're going to overlock from that folded edge through to the outside of the shoulder where we're going to attach the sleeve. So when you've done that on one side, go ahead and do that on the other side. The only thing you really need to make sure of when you do this is that those two layers are really butted into each other and we want both of the folds to be in the same direction. So this is it from the front and that's it from the back. When you're ready, trim back the end of your overlocking thread to just under an inch on both ends. Now I'm going to sew in the sleeve. So open this up so we have right sides up and take one of the sleeves and because this is a drop shoulder, they're cut on the fold, so it doesn't matter which sleeve you choose. We're going to match that sleeve to the armhole. Now, when you do that, in the center of the sleeve, there'll be a notch. Now, that notch needs to match to the seam here in the armhole. So place those right sides together and overlock that into place. And when you're finished doing that on one side, go ahead and repeat that on the other side. Now I'm sewing view B. Uh, view B has the roll neck, the turtle neck, um, and it has the puffed sleeve which we sew with the long cuff. So it's pretty much the same to start. We're going to put right sides together and we're going to sew the shoulders. The fabric I'm sewing in here is a sweatshirting fleece. It's, it's minimal stretch, it's brushed, 25% uh, stretch maybe. At a push I'd say it's got 30. So, Let's sew the shoulders. Place the shoulders right sides together, so the front and the back right sides together. And um, the back is higher and has two notches, and the front is lower and has a single notch in the center. Let's sew in the sleeve now for view B. 
take your garment and at the shoulder area where this sleeve's going to sit in, open that up so it's right side up and then take one of the sleeves, it doesn't matter which sleeve you have. Now you need to make sure you sew this the right way around. The top of the sleeve has one notch in the center which we're going to match to the shoulder seam here and the bottom of the sleeve has got three notches. There's one in the center and then one at midway point past it and it's important that we sew in the sleeve the right way. So place your sleeve so we have our fabric right side down, match that center notch and I've, I've cut my notch a bit deep here so I'm just going to have to be a bit careful when I serge that through and stitch that sleeve into place and when you've done it on one side repeat it for the other side. So I'm not going to bore you with showing you me sewing in the other sleeve. What we're going to do now before we sew the side seam is to put a gathering thread at the bottom of the sleeve. Um, you can use your gather with your overlocker if you want or you can do your um, gather with a plain stitch on a sewing machine. I do have a tutorial on my YouTube channel if you want to um, serge with your um, overlocker. So if you want to follow my YouTube tutorial on gathering with your serger, go ahead. I'm just going to run a line of stitching with my plain machine. So here is the wrist area of my garment. I'm going to lengthen my stitch length from normal. I'm going to pull out a length of thread. And I'm not going to start from right on the edge. I'm going to start from maybe quarter of an inch, six mil in. And I'm going to sew quarter of an inch, six mil up from the raw edge. And I'm just going to stitch a line of stitching. Now when you've finished, stop the same distance from the end. Take out a length of thread and cut. And then put your stitch length back to wherever you had it before. So what I'm going to do now is do my gathering from the back and when you gather um, just make sure you have um, the same thread so from each side if you're using the back have the back. Now I'm just doing this in advance of my side seam. So just find the thread and pull that up. And now we'll go back to our serger. Um, if you prefer, you can sew two lines of stitching. I never bother. Entirely up to you. When you're back at your overlocker, your serger, fold your garment at the wrist, right sides together. And we are going to serge or overlock the seam together through the underarm here, right through to the hem of the garment. Now, you may have bulk when you reach this underarm point here. Just make sure the seams face in different directions just to reduce some of that bulk. Now when we start at the wrist area, the reason I said start in 6mm quarter of an inch is because we do not want to catch our threads in our serging. If you need to, you could always unpick them a small way. Just make sure they don't get cut off. So we want all four threads out to the side when we start. Now we're going to start in on the side seam. Come to the wrist area 
and this will be the same if you're sewing um, the long cuff or the short cuff. Place those right sides together and we are going to overlock or serge, whatever you like to call it, from the wrist through um, the underarm here, the seam. Make sure those seams match here. And as we come down through the side seam, we're going to come across the area that we surged before. So what I'd like you to do is, when you get to the part that this surging meets, we're going to surge off. Here you can see my surging is meeting together, my overlock, so as soon as I come up to it, I'm just going to surge off and then trim that back to about an inch and then just repeat that on the other side. I've come to my plain sewing machine now and I'm working on the side seam. So the next thing we need to do is locate the drill hole that is around this dog leg area. So what we need to do is make sure that our drill holes are sitting on top of each other exactly. So all I've done is put a pin in there to mark the spot. Right, so what I'm going to do, and you can do this from the bottom up or the top down, whatever you prefer, we are going to start stitching directly on top of that drill hole. So we want our needle to go through our two layers of fabric right on that spot like so. What I'm going to do is just do a small back tack and then we're going to imagine a straight line up to the very outside of our surging, our overlocking, and we're going to sew a straight line up. Now you could mark that in with chalk if you want. So we're going to go forward three, back three, and I'm just going to sew, making sure these edges are on top of each other, right up to where our surging joined. So here's our tail. We're going to go up and make sure we meet exactly on the edge, a little bit past it, and then back tack off and then repeat that on the other side. Go to your iron and press those seams open like so. So we're just looking for an even distance all the way down. So now we're going to stitch this into place. We're going to stitch up through the overlocking line and we're going to stitch directly across. Um, for this I'm going to stitch just at the top of the split. Most of the time I tend to stitch this higher, but for this garment I'm going to stitch it directly across the top of the split and down the other side. And it's up to you whether you want to do it from the back or the front. I'm going to do it from the front because I can see through this fabric really easily and I can feel it. So I'm just going to do basically a rectangle. and there's no need to back tack on this. I'm going to stop with the needle down in my work, lift my presser foot, turn, pivot, put my presser foot down and stitch across. 
I'm stopping with my needle down, lift, turn and pivot, rearrange and stitch down. And then just go ahead and repeat that on the other side and I'm going to press those again just to embed those stitches into place. Now make sure when you are sewing with your plain sewing machine that you have a ball needle in here. The needle will push the fibres apart, it won't pierce them. This is the short cuff view. What I'm doing is I'm going to take one of the cuffs and on one edge you'll have a notch at the top and the bottom. We're going to fold this right sides together with the notch at the fold. We're going to match those raw edges together and we're going to overlock serge through that seam. Now put your hand inside and give that a turn through so we will have wrong sides together and right sides out. And then just rearrange that so that the notches are sitting on top of each other and that the seams are together. And don't forget to repeat this for the other side. To sew in the cuff, come to one of the wrist areas. Now this is the same for the short cuff or the long cuff for view A. For view B we're going to be doing a little bit more gathering but for view A this is the same. So what we're going to do is put a cuff inside the wrist area, we're going to match the seams and we're going to match the notches because there's a notch right here on the fold. If you forgot to put it in, now is your time to quickly snip that in. So take the cuff and pop that inside so we have right sides together. You are going to need to do a little bit of stretching to make this fit, but what we want to do is make sure that the notches match. As you can tell there's, there's a gap here so we have to stretch this as we sew. It's a good idea to not start stitching, not to start surging <laughs> at the seam because of the bulk. And when you sew this, it's often easier to sew it so that the cuff is up, so the garment's inside out and the cuff is on the inside. So we need to make sure that we're going to catch all three layers. So I'm just going to start that off just so it catches and it sort of works like another pair of hands for me and then I'm going to match that seam there and I'm going to gently stretch this all and ease that to fit evenly. When you get to the seam it's a good idea for the seams to face in different directions just to reduce the bulk. Mm -hmm. 
and go ahead and repeat that on the other side. Our long cuff pieces look like this. On the longer edge, there's a notch in the center, and at the wrist edge, there's notches to show us the hem turn position. So take a cuff, place it right sides together so that that notch is on the fold, and surge through this edge here. Now this cuff is designed to sit firm um, against your lower arm, so just be wary of that. You might like to just check it now. Um, now's the time to adjust it. Did I get that around the right way? Now's the time to adjust it if you want. It needs to be firm up here, but it doesn't have to be so firm around the wrist, but you can certainly adjust that to suit. So the next thing we're going to do is our hem. And whether you're sewing just the plain hem view uh, the long sleeve with the plain hem. This is exactly what we're going to do now. The same as in this cuff view is we're going to turn this up at the notch positions which you should be able to see through the overlocking line. And we're going to cover stitch that or twin needle or whatever hem stitch you like at one and a half centimeters which I believe is nine sixteenths of an inch. Now because I'm not using a twin needle or my cover seamer today, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to secure the edge of that um, sleeve and then plain stitch it on my plain sewer. next step you're going to need some pins or some clips. Take the long cuff and place it inside the wrist area so we have right sides together. Find those gathering cords and just pop them out of the way and then match the seam and hold it in place or the pin. Now directly opposite that seam there's a notch. Match that to the notch on the gathered edge. Okay, so I found that a little challenging and I went and pre-marked in all my notch positions. So match that there. And then halfway between the two on your cuff you'll have another notch on each side. And this is just so that we can distribute um, the puff on that sleeve nice and evenly. So now if you're feeling brave you can go straight to your serger and serge that into place. Um, if you're not you can stitch that into place with a tack stitch. Now the reason I gathered from the back is because when we're at this stage it's so much easier to control the gathering here. Now when you do serge this into place don't start um, from the seam. It will make life a little bit more challenging from, for you. Um, and make sure you just distribute those gathers in advance as well. Just evenly spread them out. When you have those gathers distributed evenly, you need to search that into place. I always find it easier if this is sewing so that the um, cuff is on top. So basically what I'm going to do is turn the entire thing inside out. It's only because um, working with those gathers and this way I can just manipulate them as I go. Actually you know what, I'm going to run a tack stitch through with my plain sewer just so this ends up perfect and I don't have to make any adjustments.
So because of that tack stitch within the seam allowance of 6mm, quarter of an inch, this is going to be quite straightforward. And the other thing of course I did with my blade is trim off all those threads as we went on. So just check that everything's caught into place and repeat that on the other side. The last step in our process is to stitch in our hem which has a one inch two and a half centimeter seam allowance so if you're using a twin needle um, I suggest you go to your iron and press your hem up at that amount and then stitch that into place on the front and the back I'm just going to serge the raw edge and use my plain sewer but certainly a cover stitch or a twin needle is um, much better. I've surged my edge, I'm just going to tuck that um, overlocking, that surging cord in and I'm going to stitch this from the front just so I can control how it all looks and just keep it all nice and tidy and I'm stitching through that overlocking surging line. So I'm going to give that a um, press and view A is finished, ultra fast so um, I hope you enjoy it. So I'm going to continue now with a view B. So I nearly forgot to mention go to your iron and press that collar into place. It um, sits like so and the way we sewed it just holds it down without any need for um, stitching in the ditch to hold the collar into place. For the roll neck collar, which some people call a turtleneck or a polo, here is our piece. It is a long rectangle and it has so three notches. Piece, fold it right sides together and serge those two edges together. this back on itself so we have wrong sides together or right sides out and then match the notch positions and here is our collar starting to take shape so when we're finished it's going to be rolled over like that for wearing so if your fabric is quite bulky you might prefer to do this in a different fabric or in a ribbing or maybe a cotton micro or something like that To sew the collar into the neckline, place your garment wrong sides out and then take your collar piece and place it inside.
match the seam on the collar to the centre of the double notches at the back of the garment. And then directly opposite that we have a single notch which is at the front of the garment. Our remaining notches are marked to show us the shoulder position. And make sure that those seams face towards the back of the garment. And when you're ready, we're going to overlock serge that into place. It's a good idea to not start from the centre back because of the bulk. We're going to start from somewhere around the shoulder. One side or the other is usually good. And you're going to need to gently stretch that collar as you sew it. The waistband for view B is designed to be very wide and it's also designed to look flat. So this garment is based on um, the quite um, modern boxy crops that are around at the moment. If you want your waistband to draw in, so to be um, bouncy, you might want to reduce some of the length of this because this is only designed for just a slightly reduced stretch so that the garment looks flat. So you might want to pull that back to 85%. At the moment it's around about 95%. The other thing you need to know is the seam here is the side seam. So we're going to make sure we sew this to the left hand side of the garment. But let's just start from the beginning. So we're going to fold this right sides together and overlock serge the short edges together. Then we're going to fold that again so we have wrong sides together and right sides out. Now we need to match our notches. So the seams are going to be the left hand side seam. Directly opposite that there are two notches. That's going to be our right hand side seam. And then we have notches in the centre which are going to match to our centre front and our centre back. To sew in the waistband take the garment and place it wrong sides out and make sure you know which is the left hand side seam and then place the waistband so we have right sides together. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pin the seams at the side seam together. We're going to match together the centre back and the centre front. So all I'm doing is just making sure the notches all join up. And then I'm going to match the other side seam.
So you're going to need to stretch that waistband as you sew it in. As you can tell, there's not a huge amount to stretch in, but it's enough to just bring that um, extra width back in. And I'm going to start on the left hand side seam, but I'm just going to start just to one side of it. And I'm also going to make sure that all of those um, seams face in different directions, just to reduce some of the bulk. And then just sew that together, just distribute that ease evenly, that stretch evenly between those notch positions. So there we have it, we're finished. Now, one last thing which does look nice in um, cropped garments is sometimes it's really nice to run a twin needle stitch or a cover stitch just on either side of the seam. It can just really um, just give it a little bit of an extra touch and you could even do it at the shoulders while you sew this through as well just to make it um, a little bit different. But um, thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoy your garment. And as always, thank you so much for buying my patterns. Um, you can't imagine how much it means to me that people like what I do for a craft. So um, if you're interested, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to my channel for more free content. And I hope to see you again soon. Thanks. Bye.